There is no better way to get to know a wine region than by trying multiple vintages. In this week's pack, we're talking about the right bank of Bordeaux, home to some of the best Merlot and Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon blends in the world. This is a region that most of the wine producing regions in the new world look to when they're trying to produce high quality red Bordeaux blends. We're exploring the right bank and we're trying vintages like 2012, 2013, 2014, and 2015. There's really no right or wrong way to taste across multiple, multiple vintages. But in this case, I really wanted to start with the 2012 vintage. As wine develops or it ages, it becomes a little bit more complex. You might imagine like we do as people. Well, if you're having a 2012 vintage prior to having 2015, you're more likely to see some of the nuances or the development of fruit and flavor and that way you can appreciate the young wine when you've kind of understood how fruit goes from fresh and juicy to maybe dried or dried out. Even more so when you get into 10, 20 year old uh, wines, you're gonna start to see less and less of the freshness of fruit and more layers of complexity in other non-fruit or tertiary aromas. So for this wine, we have Chateau Tumalin. Um, this is, again, exploring the right bank of Bordeaux, so we're in a region called Canon Fronsac, which is just west of the famous region of Pomerol. So we're in Merlot country, and the 2012 vintage was a fantastic vintage for Merlot. They call it the Merlot year. It might be because Merlot is an early ripening grape, and it's generally harvested before the vintage becomes difficult, like in 2012, it was a little bit harder for Cabernet Sauvignon, so more of a right bank vintage. The 2012 right now is six years old, um, and this wine is a blend of 80% Merlot and 20% Cab Franc. When you look at the color, you see a little bit of garnet, and garnet is a sign of age, at the edge. In the center, you still have that classic claret or Bordeaux style color, which is a, a ruby that has hints of purple. On the nose, when you get this wine, you have very much so that dried fruit component. So we have plums and we have cherries, mostly red fruit, but in this case, they're a little bit dried out. You can imagine like seeing like the shriveling of the skin on the plum or of the cherry. It has a savory herb component, just like um, crunchy dried oregano or twigs and mulch. Got a little bit of cocoa or chocolate, which is a signature, for me at least, Merlot quality. And then the vanilla, cedar, or baking spices coming from the fact that they aged this wine in some new French oak. On the palate, the wine is smooth, it's fleshy, ripe and rich, as great ripe bank Bordeaux should be. It's showing some of that characteristic that the wine has some age, and while it's absolutely delicious right now. You can see that at the end, the little bit of freshness is starting to fade. So you really do wanna drink this wine in the next, let's say two to three years. Here we have the Clos de Wois, which is a wine from the region of Fronsac, and this is a 2013 vintage. So first and foremost, you might not see that big of a difference in age between 2012, let's say, and 2013. But it's an opportunity to talk about vintages. And in 2013, let's be honest, it was a difficult vintage. It was a little bit wet and a little bit humid during um, the harvest season. And it was a cold spring, which led to a later bud break. So what does that mean for us normal people? Well. Basically, the, vin the vinter, the grape grower, the winemaker, has to adapt his style or what's going on in the vineyards and the winery depending on what mother nature throws his way, so or her way, right? So for example, in really great vintages, the grapes are abundant, the wine is easy to make, it's really just, you know, kind of simple for the winemaker, but really great winemakers have to work really hard when Mother Nature throws them a curveball. So in this case, you find the best producers, even in off, we call, vintages, you're able to get a really good producer and they can fix all of Mother Nature's problems. So here we have Clos de Wa 2013. We're looking at that medium ruby color in the core. It has a slightly orange edge. 
It's got some color concentration in the tears, so when you uh, swirl it from side to side, you see a little staining there. On the nose, it's fresh, kind of fresh and developing fruit. So we have that juicy plum, red and black. Got that typical cocoa, Swiss Miss, hot chocolate, um, almost like cocoa powder on the nose. A little bit of that dried herbs and stemmy quality. Potting soil, forest floor, that kind of thing. Wow, the palate is so good. Juicy, fresh, lively. On the sides of my mouth, I feel like almost like a tartness in the fruit. So here's the thing. If 2013 was colder and was a little bit more difficult, and maybe the general population doesn't love it as much, let's say, as a 2012, what about those of us that like tartness in our fruit? Maybe we like colder vintages. That's why it's really up to us to decide, not the critics, what is the best vintage for us. So if I like ripe and fleshy, I might like the 2012. But if I love the way wine feels when it's a little bit sour on the finish, I might love the 2013. Next up is 2014 Tour de Milan, and this is also from the Fronsac region. I love vintage variation. It's one of my favorite things to talk about because you feel like you're in the region and you're experiencing like the anticipation that the producer or grape grower felt. So 2014 was a vintage where people were kept in suspense. No one really knew what was happening, but it turned out to be a later ripening vintage and a vintage that was unbelievable for Merlot. So what does that mean for us? When we get warm climate, you know this, we get riper fruit. Maybe the acid is slightly decreased and the wine feels I don't know, sappier, juicier, maybe more fleshy. So let's see what's going on in our glass. So we have this deep purple color, so not really that much of the garnet. So a four-year-old wine generally has a teeny bit of like purple still left in it. And you can see a little bit of staining in the tears. And the fruit smells riper. It's almost like you get a little bit of heat in the nose, like you can smell, not necessarily alcohol like in excessive amounts, but you can smell that it was warmer and sunnier in that, in that vintage or that year. So yeah, I get the typical minty, um, almost like spearmint or eucalyptus on the nose. There's like a juiciness to the fruit that we feel like the fruit is younger, black plum, red plum, um, perfectly ripe or sappy or overripe red fruit. There's a little bit of cocoa and a little bit of dust maybe coming from the vanilla, um, or sorry, from the new French oak barrels, but just lively. So what's better, younger or older wine? It depends on what you're interested in. What are you looking for tonight? So for me, this juicier, fresher, younger wine might be like perfect with like bolder foods, Let's say I was making barbecue, whereas maybe when I'm grilling a lamb loin or I'm making some roasted root vegetables, I might want some of those earthier, not as fresh and lively flavors like I find in an older vintage. Make sense? The most important thing is the younger wines, they tend to have a little bit more um, tannin. So Merlot is a soft, ripened, soft, and silky wine in general, but you can definitely see that there's a little bit more grip or sandy or gritty quality in this wine than the previous two vintages. So we're starting to see like a little bit of dustiness on the end of our palate. And there's still a lot of acid in the sides of my mouth. This is a bigger wine, slightly more body than the last two. Again, just a quality of the riper vintage, more sugar in the grapes, more alcohol, more weight in the finished wine. This 2015 vintage Chateau Tessin Day, this is again primarily Merlot with a little bit of Cabernet Franc just to add that savory green and you know kind of uh, vegetal quality. But I want to talk about this vintage because 2015 was one of the best vintages in the last 30 years. So again, when we're talking about vintages, we say best because we're talking about like, what do the critics say? Or what are the vintages where we're going to see them for another 
10, 20, 30 years. The abundant vintages, the vintages where the fruit is ripening at the right time, where the flowers that form the berries are in excess, those are considered better vintages than when the vine has a problem at flowering and it doesn't develop as much fruit and thus the vintage is smaller. So 2015 was one of the best vintages in the last 30 years. So I would expect this wine to be around for a long time. It doesn't mean that when you open a bottle of a great vintage wine, it's necessarily going to be great at that moment. So when we're looking at the color, typical purple ruby color has a little bit more pink at the edge and generally younger wines have more pink whereas older wines have a little bit more garnet. On the nose it's a little bit closed which might be a good thing that means that the fruit maybe is there but at this moment this bottle is showing a little bit more quiet so we're going to want to swirl it give it some air let it come kind of up to temperature and show us all of its flavor. And it's primarily fruit right now, so it's juicy, ripe, rich, red plums, black plums, cherries, um, maybe even a little strawberry. There's not a lot of tertiary or secondary flavors, so I do get a little cocoa and a little vanilla, which is from the oak, but I'm not getting a lot of development of fruit, of non-fruit aromas rather. So right now it's all about the fruit. Do you want to drink young wine when it's really fresh and fruity? It really depends on you. A Little bit of savory quality, almost like root vegetables as well. And on the palate, the wine is slightly floral. I love that lavender, violet aroma and flavor. Kind of comes up through your mouth and up through your nose. And it's really like just pretty and elegant and soft. Um, as this wine ages, we'll start to see some of those non-fruit aromas and flavors building. But right now the wine is about medium plus in body. It's got a little bit of that nice fresh acidity at the finish and a slightly bit, a slight bit of that kind of tactile, sandy, dusty quality. But the fruit is so generous being from such a great vintage that you don't notice the tannin as much. So you just get this plush and beautiful wine that's like ready to drink right now and will stand the test of time, will be able to put in your cellar and check in on it in a few years. Anytime you drink wine, you should always drink what you like. Don't be embarrassed if you like a vintage that's considered not as good as other vintages. There's something for everyone and that's the beauty of every year a different harvest. So whether you love the 2012 because you wanted that subdued fruit, that dried flavor, and more of those non-fruit or tertiary flavors, or you were in love with the greatest vintage in the last 30 years with the 2015 and all of its abundance of fruit and fleshiness and youth, it's really something for everybody. And that's the beauty of wine. It keeps changing and there's always something new to learn.